Hi guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the game Cities of Venus. Now the object of Cities of Venus is you're going to try to get the most amount of victory points. What you have is a station that is floating over Venus and it's getting sent supplies from Earth. However, that supply line has been cut off and that's what's going to trigger the end of the game is when you get the Earth card. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using Venus to try to help upgrade your ship, get supplies, and a host of other things. So let's check it out. So we'll go ahead and go over the components in the game here. These little guys are what are called v knots and these are going to be like workers that you're going to be placing, but they're also going to be used as a form of currency to buy different things. Now the object of the game is you're going to try to get the most amount of victory points by the time you end up reaching Earth. And this is the Earth card. This is going to be in uh, the third deck of the game and whenever you draw this this is going to trigger the end of the game in the game you're going to have uh, three different levels of decks this is level one and then level two will be down here a little bit and level three will be on the bottom right over here is your spaceship and the spaceship has different sections in here this is food and water this is power this is oxygen this is mechanical this is the shield this is where you're going to place your crystals or your money in this section this is the holding bay and then this is going to be your mining facility. Now these different sections are going to be used to try to help you buy certain cards that are going to be dropped here. And here's an example of a card. For example, this card is going to go into the power department. And in order to get it, you're going to need to spend a v naught from this department, this department, and then any department. And that's how you're going to pay for it. And then you'll also have to pay a crystal for it. So that's going to be the way you're going to buy these things. Right over here are the event cards. Uh, when you put these cards down, if you see a card that has that symbol in there, you're going to draw the event card and resolve it. These here are what are called innovation cards. You're going to get innovation cards whenever you are able to uh, get eight workers onto your innovation station over here. Once you do that, you'll be able to go ahead and pick up a card from here. Now, some of these cards have some symbols on them. Right over here, this is your crystals that's going to represent money. This represents one, this is three, and then this is eight. And in this section, this is where all of the V-knots are and you'll be taking them and spending them as needed. Now these cards are what are called cloud drop cards. In the very beginning, you're gonna go ahead and lay five of these out. So the first thing you're gonna see is that one of them has an event. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this card over and see what it says. Now this particular event, and there's a lot of different event cards in this game, is gonna tell me that I need to remove a V-knot from the shield section, one of them, since we're in section one. And it also says that I'm gonna gain a worker over here in the power section of the game. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is to make it simple, I'm going to just move a worker from there to there. So now that we've gotten the symbol resolved, we're going to go ahead and continue on. These cards, there's two different types of cards. There's population cards, and these are cards that are going to help increase your workers. Uh, if you end up picking this card up or buying it, you're going to get eight workers that you can disperse anywhere here or here. You also have cards that are uh, department cards, and these are going to be cards that are going to be specific to a particular department. Uh, this is going to be the cost of them here. You'll get a worker from here, from here, and then just a worker, and then a gem. And then you're going to go ahead and receive a one victory point for that, and then this is going to be seven meeples. Right over here on the board, you're going to see these numbers. These numbers basically represent how many meeples that you can fit in each station. With this particular card, if I were to get it, I would simply stick it in here like so. And uh, now I'll have be able to put seven meeples in there. So the first step is doing the cloud drop, which is what we did over here. And we're going to be uh, dealing with these cards later. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and remove a shield token. According to the game, the uh, atmosphere of Venus is messing with the shield. So every turn, you're going to lose a v naught from the shield department. Then what you're going to do is you're going to look um, on both of these sections. Whichever section has the lower amount of v naughts is going to be the amount of v naughts that you're going to take from here to disperse wherever you would like to. So right now, I've got four. So what I'm going to do is I can put up to two over here. And this, and again, with this one, I'm trying to get up to eight so I can end up taking some of these innovation cards that will help advance my ship. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one here for mining and then another one here for mining as well. Now we're going to go to the actions. Uh, there's a few actions that you can have here. The first is you can go ahead and equip your holding bay. Now, on the last step, what you're going to do is you're going to be able to buy these cards. However, if you can't afford a card, you can just take one and place it over here in your holding bay like this. 
On another turn, you can go ahead and spend a mechanical and the payment cost to go ahead and place this card. Another thing you can do is you can go ahead and purchase a v knot, and the way you're going to do that is with this money over here. It costs four of these in order to buy a v knot, so that's something you can do. You'll just go ahead and buy a v knot and then place it somewhere like so. Another thing you can do is what is called mining. You'll take a v knot from the mining camp and you'll go ahead and deposit it here and discard it. And what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and roll one of these dice over here. And what you're going to be doing is rolling for money. So let's say I roll, I've rolled a one. Well, let's just make it higher. Let's just say I roll a six. This is going to grant me six of the jewels here. And so I'm going to go ahead and take these six right here and place it right here. And this is where I'm going to keep my money. Now, there are certain cards that you can get that are going to have mining upgrades on them. And these are the symbols and the explanations as to what they can do. There are also certain innovation cards that will give you added abilities. And here's a picture of them along with the explanation of them. Another thing that I can do is grab canisters. And these are going to be the canisters over here like I had talked about. The cost is going to be here. And then it's going to have some abilities. So let's just say I'm going to go ahead and buy a canister. Look at this one over here. And I'm going to go ahead and pay the cost. And this is going to go ahead and increase the number of v knots that I can have in this department to seven. Now, if it was to a point where I had actually gotten eight of these guys over here, what I would do, I'm going to go ahead and discard these v knots here. And then I'm going to get to pick one of these cards that I would like to have. And let's just say I decided I was going to pick this one over here. So this one's going to go ahead and give me this ability that I listed earlier. And it's also going to give me seven. So let's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this card. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace it with this card. So that's essentially what a round's going to look like. Every player is going to do that. Since I went and grabbed one of these cards, you'll just simply flip it over and it will give you another card. You're going to go ahead and discard all of these cards. And then you're just going to lay out five more cards from the cloud drop and then you're going to go ahead and repeat the round like this over again so what happens once you get to the earth card that's going to go ahead and trigger the end of the game there will be one last cloud drop and you'll go ahead and do one final round and then you're going to go ahead and count up your vp points and this is the way you're going to go ahead and score i guess once again show it up here on the screen and the winner of the game is going to be the one that has the most amount of victory points by the time the game ends if there's a tie the winner is the person with the most vp on their cards if there's still a tie the winner is the player with the most canister cards i really like cities of venus this is a game that is not hard to learn and you can get right into it the instructions are not that long and ultimately what this is about is your v knots you're basically trying to figure out where you want to place them in your ship so you can get the specific cards that you want because the card are going to have different requirements in order to purchase them. Then these cards can help upgrade your ships in different ways. Then you have the event cards that can really end up tripping you up. You can end up losing your population. And then you have the shield component where you're going to be losing one uh, every turn. So you have to kind of manipulate your v knots in order to try to get your ship to work the way you want it to and also to try to get the most amount of victory points that you want it to. I really like the way that the v knots can work sort of as currency and also as workers. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. There are several different types of cards that you can use to upgrade your ship, and it really just kind of depends on what you're looking to do. And then you're also limited into what cards you can get because of the cloud drop. You may not be able to afford them at times. It's a very nice looking game, and I like the theme of it. Uh, what could be good for a car can also have negative consequences too, so you kind of have to balance those out. So between having to balance out where you want to put your v knots on your board, if you can even get them there, and then spending them to get cards that you want to try to boost up your ship or to get victory points or to use effects that can help you win the game, there's a lot going on in this game, and it's a very good game. I would recommend it to anybody who likes worker placement games, but it kind of has an added twist to it because you have to place your workers in the ship and then you spend them actually spend them as opposed to putting them back into your ship. It's an easy game to learn too. Once you uh, do one round of it, you're going to just get the gist of it. It's a good game. All right, guys, that's my review of Cities of Venus. We'll see you later. Keep on gaming.